English shorthand dictation number 268. Dictation speed 160 words per minute. Ready? Start. Honorable Speaker Sir, I thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak on this small but very important piece of legislation. Sir, the government must admit the gross lapse on its part in extending this legislation to Nagaland for nearly one and a half decades and also to Himachal Pradesh where family courts have been established in 2019 itself. This incident came to light only when a petition was filed in the High Court of Himachal Pradesh challenging the validity of family courts. Had there not been any petition, we would not be discussing this bill at all. Sir, governance is a continuous process. So, this kind of lapse is not acceptable and this kind of functioning of the ministry is not accepted from this government. So, taking advantage of this discussion, I wish to appeal to all ministries of the central government to look into the acts that are under their administrative control and to see whether there are any such lapses and if there are any any kindly take suitable action. I would request the government to set up a committee to scrutinize all the existing laws and recommend corrective measures to the administrative ministries wherever required. This is the first point I wish to make. Sir, taking advantage of this bill, I wish to speak on a few issues that are plaguing the family court system in the country, be it relating to discrimination against fathers in custody cases or delays in judgment or misuse of this legislation. We all must admit that the family court system in the country is not quite in the pink of health. One of the reasons behind this is the lack of infrastructure and shortage of judges and judicial officers at the lower level. The Honorable Law Minister himself, in reply to a question in Parliament, said that 11.79 lakh cases are pending in 732 family courts and Uttar Pradesh tops with 34% of the cases. It is all happening due to shortage of family courts, lack of of infrastructure in the existing courts and shortage of staff. The 14th Finance Commission did not give any money to the ministry when it sought Rs 541 crores. Instead, it was said that 235 more family courts should be set up between 2015 and 2020. The minister may kindly share with the House what projection the ministry has made before the 15th Finance Commission and what it has received. Sir, I have a few suggestions which I would like to make for better management, functioning and delivery of justice in family courts and then I will conclude. Family courts can take the help of NGOs in settlement of disputes. Presently, we have counsellors on temporary basis. We have to appoint counsellors on permanent basis and they should be given proper training. Judges in family courts need to be gender sensitized. Procedure in family courts should be simplified to pave the way for speedy justice. The government may give a thought of appointing qualified social workers and activists as judges of family courts. As per present norms, a district with 1 million of population should have a family court. The norm has to be changed and we must ensure that every district, irrespective of size of population, should have a family court. Judges can also act as counsellors in the later part of counselling. Finally, information and communication technology and artificial intelligence have to be extensively used to settle the cases as early as possible. With these observations, I support the bill. Sir, at the outset, I am thankful to you for giving me a chance to speak on the Family Courts Amendment Bill 2022 and I stand here to speak in favor of the bill. Sir, the Indian judiciary probably has the largest backlog of pending cases in the world. This is not a problem of the system. It is primarily because of the size of population that we have. The number of marriages is also very high and it is probably the highest in the world. As per the National Judicial Data Grid, there are around 4.7 crore cases which are pending before the courts. Out of this, 4.5 crore cases are in the district's courts or the lower courts. High courts have a backlog of around 50 lakh cases and the Supreme Court has a backlog of around 72,000. Out of this, 11.75 lakh cases are pending in the family courts. 
sir the regular courts are basically burdened with civil and criminal matters and little or no attention is given to the family matters but things are changing because judicial reforms are being looked into by this government since 2014 there are pressures from individuals organizations and ngos for fast disposal of such matters the 59th report of the law commission in 1974 opened up a new paraphernalia they suggested the establishment of family courts for early disposal and settlement of family matters based on the suggestions of the law commission in 1974 and basically to reduce the burden on those trial courts the parliament passed the family courts act in 1984 and the edifice of this act was built on two strong pillars the first pillar being to promote conciliation and the second pillar being the speedy settlement of the marriage disputes which are basically brought in front of the family courts all this marked a new beginning the family courts started to get established all across the country as per the guidelines a city with more than 1 million of population will have one family court the act of 1984 laid clear terms in jurisdiction appointment of judges and powers and functions of these family courts these were going on very efficiently in 715 courts established in 26 states of the country today the present amendment of 2022 is necessitated by the case of onkar sharma versus the state of himachal pradesh which has already been discussed now it is important to mention here that the verdict delivered by those courts especially nagaland in 2008 and himachal pradesh in 2019 needs to be validated by an act of law which has to be passed from here The honorable law minister has rightfully brought this amendment in the house. The first step towards solution is the identification of the problem. This government has identified the problem. So, I thank the honorable minister and the government to identify the issue. The problem and the undoing of the previous government has to be corrected and this is the reason why this issue has been taken up in the house. The state of Himachal Pradesh has 3 family courts. The state of Nagaland has 2 family courts. Basically this amendment validates these 5 family courts and the judgments delivered by these courts. Sir, I have one small answer to make to one of our honorable members who spoke on behalf of a party which is headed by a woman who happens to be a chief minister also. he spoke of women's representation not being looked after by this government i would like to remind him that we have just elected a woman to the highest constitutional post of the country this government is also credited with having appointed the maximum number of women to the council of ministers which is in stark contrast with what happened over the last 70 years in conclusion from the perspective of dispute resolution family courts are a step in the right direction family is the foundation of our culture and our civilization and the preservation of this family unit needs to be taken care of it is also the prime responsibility of our government Honorable Chairman Sir I thank you for allowing me to speak on such an important bill I rise to support the Family Courts Amendment Bill 2022 which will amend the Family Courts Act 1984 Sir if we go back to the history of the Family Courts they were created in 1984 to resolve the disputes of marriage and family matters ensuring speedy justice the right to get speedy justice is a fundamental right as emphasized by the Supreme Court of India from time to time the nda government under the leadership of honorable prime minister has taken so many measures to uphold this fundamental right under article 21 of the constitution of india the honorable prime minister shri narendra modi in a joint conference of chief ministers and chief justices in april this year urged for easy and speedy justice this bill is in furtherance of his call for speedy justice the honorable prime minister has suggested the use of technology in the judicial system as an essential part of the digital india mission 
in the light of our honorable prime minister's call for use of technology by courts i urge the government to support the judiciary in serving online notices and conducting the virtual proceedings in family matters our honorable prime minister has also recommended the use of local languages in the courts so that the people of this country feel connected with the judicial process our honorable law minister is of the opinion that the court cases should be resolved in 3 years i really appreciate that he is persistently and sincerely working towards making it a reality